Hello, everyone. This is Mesha back with Diana Leader. Hello, Diana. Hello, Mesha. How are you? I'm great, and we're back with episode number two of Conscious Practical Magic. There it is. We love、um, the magic, and we and my、uh, brain needs to figure it out on a practical level. So, <laughs> yes, conscious and- practical magic it is, and I love it. Right, and practical magic because we're really talking about energy, and whenever we understand our energetic bodies, and we function、um, in the fullness of being the energetic beings that we are, it is magical. And so, it is practical. It is magical, and it has nothing to do with belief systems or any of those things because it's we're we're energy, and everything else that that's the science of it. Everything else you, you can believe however we want to. So. That is the beauty of it all. It's it's just the, the science of who we are, and understanding that and taking it and applying it to to whoever you are and whatever your world is and your belief system. So it is it's beautiful, conscious, practical magic. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that we are going to talk about the fact that we have five portals. By the way, some people are counting them in April. Today, of course, is the four four portal. April is the month of stability because it is four. Four is stability. Think of it like a chair or、um, the foundation of anything has four corners. So it's all about stability.、Um, today is four, April fourth. So it's four four. The beauty of that is, anytime you double up a number, that makes it a portal number. It just simply means that it's、um, it's enhanced. So it's multiplied. Therefore, the energy of the number is multiplied, and numbers have frequency to them. So the energy of it is doubled. So we have doubled the stability today. So we can capitalize on the energy of stabilizing ourselves today. And stabilization is holding frequency.、Mm-hmm. So that's what that's about. But the other thing is, when you add those fours up, you get eight. And eight, if you turn it on its side, that's the infinity sign. And so the beauty of the four four portal is, and this is every time, every year when we have the four four portal, is it's a chance to step into infinitely how we see ourselves, what it is that we are supposed to be, which is of course what we're here for is we're conscious energy being expressed in physicality, and so that is that is the infiniteness of what we are, and so that is that is what we are. Up leveling into all the time, and that's what the month of April is about. That's why some people are talking about having five portals. Is this four four portal is actually also the gateway into what they're calling the next portal, which is a full moon. A full moon, of course, is a portal energy. All, all, any points of energetic transference is, is a portal. So、um, the four six is the full moon. So we have that coming. So we're already feeling those energies. So here we are. We've got this stabilizing energy today. And then we've got full moon energy, which is a time of of change. It's a time of looking at ourselves and and deciding what do we need to release, what do we need to release, so we can claim what it is that we want to stabilize and become. So this is a time for us to be、um, using these energies to to build our lives, to make change. And then we have on the twentieth. We have a new moon, which is also planting for more change. It seeds for more change. We have a solar eclipse, which is big changes always happen on solar eclipses, and those are like major life changes. Those are like when you change jobs, change relationships, change big things. You know, move. You know, make make major life decisions during solar eclipses, and then also Mercury retrograde will be starting now. Mercury retrograde energies will start before that because we always feel those energies a little before, and they go into mid-May, which means we'll feel them a little after that. Mercury retrograde, everyone thinks of communication snafus. They think of like my, my computer's not going to work, my cell phone's not going to work. Don't don't do that because then you're setting your energy up for my stuff's not going to work. My stuff's not going to work, so you're attracting in my stuff's not going to work. Don't do that. What what a retrograde is is. Revisiting things can't help that. That's what the energy is. Okay, so choose what you're going to revisit. Yes, it's about communication. All things are about communication because that's what we do. That's that's we're that's we're communicative beings. Everything's relative. So we're going from Aries to Taurus. Aries right now is the energy we're in. 
This full moon is Aries. That's fire energy. That's getting things done energy. That's why we're building these foundations right now. What is it I want my life to be? That's why this 4-4 portal is always such a big deal. But we're going into Taurus energy, which is, okay, I know what I want my life to be, but hold on a second. I also want it to be pleasurable. I want love in my life. I want joy in my life. I don't want to just do, do, do. I want it balanced. So there's going to be um, uh, the new moon is Libra, which that's going to balance out that Aries energy because we're going into Taurus season. So as we're, as we're doing all of this stabilizing and this big change at the end of April with the, um, the new moon and the solar eclipse, but then we're having the Mercury retrograde and we're going right into May, which is the five, which is change. That's because Mercury retrograde, some people are, are hearing people talk about, we're going to be tested. You're going to make all these decisions and then you're going to be tested. Mercury retrograde is going to test you. No, no, we're not tested by anything. There's no test to pass. It's simply we've been in comfortable behavioral styles. And now we've made up our mind to get into different energy. We've got to hold those frequencies. And so as the retrograde energies cause us to revisit what we have done, we have to look at those things and decide, okay, what did I like about that? What was good about that? What do I want to revisit and do differently? What do I want to revisit and double down on and do more of? So it's a chance to do things better. Mm -hmm. So it's a chance to take the things we decide we want and then look at the things that we've already done and change our lives to better stabilize ourselves to be what we've decided we want to be. So the four is about stabilization and the five is about grounding that change, making that change, affirming that change. So that's that's what we have coming up, these energies we have, we're rolling into. So today is like the start of a huge ass portal series this big energy, but, but this is always happening. You know, I know there's a big deal being made about it, but these energies are cyclic. Okay. Now, granted, we don't always have um, eclipses at the same time. You know, we don't always have all, all these energies, but we're always going through, what do I want to become? What do I want to stabilize in my life? How do I hold that change? How do I hold frequency? And the point is we're always up leveling. Everybody's up leveling this month, but we're always up leveling because the whole planet is coming up into the frequency of what we're created in love. We're love. And so we're all coming into the frequency to hold love so we can balance our feminine and masculine energies, if you will, or our um, allowing and our doing energies so that the life we have is not the life we're making happen but it's the life that we're holding the frequency of the love that we are so that we attract in what matches us. So our lives flow. So we're not trying to make anything happen because we can't hold the energy when we try to make something happen, which is what you and I were talking about, because that's manipulating someone else. Mm -hmm. That's not sovereignty of self, which is not love. So we don't have the energy to keep putting into Okay, I'm going to make my twin be with me. Okay, you may make them, you may convince them to, et cetera, et cetera, but where's that energy going to keep coming from? Because you've gotten into the energy of making or manipulating, and now that's the energy you've put out. So now you've got that energy coming in on you, draining you, so you don't have the energy now to keep putting into the one that you were doing it to. That's a 3D quagmire. Yeah. No, you just, you just be you. And if that twin or soulmate or job or whatever comes in, it's what's, it's what's in resonance with you then. If something comes along later that you wanted that wasn't coming in, when it comes in, whatever did come in, when it's time for that other, whatever did come in, well, it'll it'll be time for it to go and it'll move along. Yeah. And we have to trust release. that. Yeah. 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 Natural release for sure. And I want to, I want to talk a little bit about that, the manipulation thing that and yes, we were, I know we were you talking do. About this before. I know it's your biggie. <laughs> I do, I do, because it's. Um, I mean, we've we've all done it. 
to some degree yeah. over our lifetime. We really have. It's and it, and often it comes from if we if we if we suffer at all with not having a voice, not being able to express ourselves exactly the way that we need to, then um, then we're looking for other ways to engage, right? We're looking for other ways to make us feel better because you know let me just be really clear that getting all your needs met every day <laughs> that's going to make you feel amazing absolutely amazing you're going to feel good then and i think feeling good is often the the um the test you know if something is not feeling good you know you're not aligned you know it's not resonating if it doesn't feel good it ain't resonating so you know you need to that's where you need to release stuff but in terms of that um, communication with people or that manipulating, often that is coming from a place of us not feeling strong enough to be able to do what we need to do for ourselves first. You yes. know, I mean, because it sounds really bad to say, oh, well, you're, an, you're a manipulator. Well, you know what? I, I own that sometimes. I do. <laughs> we all have. Um, we all have. But. But it's but understanding where it's coming from, and this is part of awareness. So you know, and I always I always suggest people you know take take whatever tidbits from what you hear, and figure out what lands for you and what you think is going to support you and honor you and help you align better. You don't have to just simply say, oh well, someone so told me to. No, you don't. So in terms of, of manipulation, when when we are doing that, it's often not coming from a place of oh, gonna mess you up that <laughs> you know I'm just gonna boss you around I'm gonna do that it's not it's not but on some level we're getting something out of that it's not always positive for us it's rarely positive for us but we we feel as though we're getting something out of it which allows us to shadow those places that um, where we need to look and do our own inner work you know, yeah. so and when we and you're always talking about mirrors and, and sometimes I struggle with the concept, but I know it, I know it's accurate. I just really have to pay attention to it more. But, you know, what we are putting out is always a mirror for where we need to look and honor ourselves. Yes. You know, always, 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 always. So, yeah, that's my thing about manipulation. It doesn't we're not serving anybody truly by doing that. We think that we are. And as women, you know, we are big nurturers you know we're big helpers we're all that stuff and we and we've learned to do that you know society has has programmed us to do that and to be that um well, and and the masculine who believes that they're supposed to provide and take care of and in mm -hmm. the way etc cetera, etc cetera. so they have that it's a different type of nurturing but it, it's they have it too yeah. it's yeah it's it's the role so right, yeah right. yeah sure guys you know i mean if you're manipulating to get what you to in order to be who you think you are who you should be right you, you know it's not really what you need to be inside but if it's something that oh well you know my my parents taught me to be you know yeah. to, to do this 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 so whether we're women or men it doesn't really matter right. so right. you know if that's what we're following instead of following what we really know on ourselves and what actually resonates with us then it's not going to do us any good and it's not going to do the other person any good but i just think it's important to recognize that because it's not a place to beat ourselves up. No, absolutely it's not, not. Because it's typical, you know, typical behavior. I don't think that there's a person on, on the earth that has not manipulated or um, ignored themselves <laughs> at some point. It's what we've been programmed to do. We mm -hmm. have been programmed that sovereignty of self is wrong, that that is selfish behavior. That when we are sovereign over ourselves, looking out for ourselves, loving ourselves, that then we are neglecting other people and putting ourselves before other people. And that is bass backwards. When we are not in the energy that is best for us, we are not attracting into us resonant energies. And that is the only time that we are being where we're supposed to be and letting other people be where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That what we've been taught to do instead is play roles and fill roles. When we do that, then we're all manipulating each other. We're all playing each other. We're all fitting into boxes that you, you said the test was, does this feel good or not? When it doesn't feel good, you're not being sovereign over yourself and you're not letting other people be. Whenever everybody's not really feeling good, but everybody's trying to act like they are. Hello, that's not kind of what we have now. <laughs> is that, that is what we're coming out of. And that yeah. is 
But, and we were told, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Sh- no, don't talk about it. You know, no, well, yeah, that's just how it is. No, well, nobody really likes it, but that's that's the polite thing to do. That's the right thing to do. That's the unselfish thing to do. If it's so freaking right to do, why is everybody so miserable? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not the right thing to do. The, it is never right to impose to impose how society thinks things are supposed to be on one another because then we're all in roles that society thinks we're supposed to be in that don't feel good to us Mm -hmm. when all we're really supposed to do is be in the frequency of love and that is just what feels good to us and when we do that the right things will come in and that doesn't mean a million dollars falls from the sky that doesn't mean the person that you want to love you loves you That means that when you're in the frequency of, I want to be abundant, I feel abundant, that the things you need so your life will flow will come in. That means that I want love in my life. I'm open to love in my life. That means someone who will love the way you love will come into your life. Doesn't mean that you get to pick out the person. Because when we pick out the person, oh, my twin flame, there they are. My twin flame's gonna love me. My twin flame's gonna love me. No, then what you're doing is you're imposing upon that person what you want you've mm-hmm. picked out a person and you're that's manipulation you don't get to do that you get to be in the frequency of okay i'm open to them but if they don't if they don't respond you're in the energy of i'm open to be loved i'm open to be loved the way i love and then whoever comes in you accept that is the gift that that came in that's the energy that came in you're open to that we close ourselves off I want I want the I want the job that is going to be the best job for me. I want my best and highest timeline for the best job. Oh, by the way, that job is, and then we tell the universe exactly what that job is. Specifically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then and then the job doesn't come, and we're like, I didn't get I didn't get what I asked for. I didn't get my best and highest yeah. good. No, I tried to give you your best and highest good, but you told me exactly what it was, and that's not what it was. And and that HR person was never going to hire you because they didn't like the way you looked, et cetera, et cetera. And and they've got sovereignty of self and, and the universe can't make them hire you, you know, because it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. So we have to be open to I'm, I'm in the energy of I'm going to work at the company where my energy matches, where it's going to be my best and highest good, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Then we go for the interviews. We do our part. We go where we're led and we attract in that right job. And we accept that when we attract it in and then we're happy. Our lives flow because we've opened ourselves up to be with resonant energies. When we insist on it's got to be that place, we may get it. But then we've put ourselves in non-resonant energies mm-hmm. and we got exactly what we wanted and we're miserable. Mm-hmm. And we don't know why. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's funny because I can look back on on my life and people around me who, you know, at a, at a time, at a certain point of time when um, when, you know, for me, when I didn't when I didn't care about the outcome, <laughs> you know, when I just knew exactly what I wanted and I just, you know, I was just enjoying life from there. So yeah. when yeah. that happened and it, you know, and this is, this is absolutely accurate when that happened at different points, cause you know, it, there were big blocks of it and then, you know, maybe not so much and then bigger blocks of it. But when that was happening for me, when I was allowing myself to be there without expectation, yes, everything happened for me. You know, every consulting gig I wanted, yeah. every, you know, every relationship that I wanted, it, everything just fell into place, including because, bigger you know, things like, you know, we need a bigger house because our kids are growing out of this right. one kind of thing. So one will arrive, one will show up, yeah. you know, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of freaky. So it's, it's the, I know you're going to, you were going to get into manifesting anyway, but, <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> but well, that's because it. that's because it is what you just said unconditional love which is what we're to be in that's the energy we're created in that means no expectation expectation we're taught to manifest so specifically which is true we are meant to manifest specifically but by specifically that means specifically how it's going to make us feel the energy of it not the details of it Mm -hmm. but the energy of it because the energy of it is what matters because that's what we're going to attract in is the energy of it but when we say it's got to be that house on that corner, that guy, that, you know, then then we're manipulating other people and we don't get to tell other people no. what to do. No. Yeah. And, and you know what? And that that goes all the way down to relationships like just 
plain old communication in relationships. Yes. So, and that's been a very interesting one for me to watch over the years, how, how that can shift when you, when you stop having those expectations and yeah. hand in hand, allowing somebody else to be whoever they are and whatever they are in whatever moment, like just, you know, okay, so yeah. I, I may have a relationship with you. Maybe it's one that I really, you know, maybe it's a family one that you can't, you know, you can't yeah. show the door or whatever you can't end or whatever, you know, just to make sure that you are allowing that person to be whoever they are without the expectation that they have to be something different. Because when somebody is really, you know, like if they're really far, well, if they're not resonating with you at all, right? then you, you know, then there's a different, you know, we need to, we need to deal with that too. We need to act on that. But if it's just someone who is doing their own thing, um, maybe they're coming to you in a certain way or they're not, or, you know, just, you know, maybe it's just not your way. Right. Right. But that, but that's okay. Because if we don't have expectation and we, um, and we know that we are not allowing in any expectation from anybody else, you know, I'm good. You know, I'm good right here. I don't have yeah. to, I don't have to behave this way because my mom tells me this or, you know, or my dad tells me that or my husband tells me this. You know, I don't have to do that. I can be who I am and I can be responsible for who I am based on what I what I know and what I love about myself and that unconditional love. Um, but I don't have to react, you know, um, in that in that unconscious way in relationships that allows in the manipulation, allows in the expectation, and really messes with with us and other people. Right. It comes down to, um, one, if, if an energy is truly non-resonant with you, limit the amount of energetic bandwidth that you're giving it, you know, family, whatever. Um, but that doesn't mean that when you are around them that you have to have expectation that that is unreasonable. You know, if, if you're going to be around them for family get together or whatever, don't have expectation that they're going to be what you want them to be. They're not going to be. Mm-hmm. Go with the expectation that you're going to hold your frequency. You're going to be you mm-hmm. and you're going to be polite while you're being you and you're going to leave when you need to leave, you know. But um, but it's when it's when it's somebody that you're with all the time you you just you just hold your frequency and you just be you and you let them be them and either you're resonant and you can stay together and that's going to work or you're not resonant and you're not going to stay together anyway mm-hmm. so it's it's one of the two because you don't want to be with someone that you're so not resonant that the two of you can't stay together and if you are resonant enough to stay together you're going to work that out you're going to figure it out it's going to it's going to be okay when you come at it from that standpoint of okay I don't have the expectation that I'm going to have my way all the time, that this person is going to bend toward my will that, because that's, that's like the old thing. You're, I love you. You're just perfect. Uh, Now I want to change you. But yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Now I want to change you. I love you. You're just perfect. Now I want to change you either. Now we can love somebody and, but there can be things about them and lifestyle and stuff that doesn't match ours. And so Mm -hmm. we have to decide, can I, can I, is that work with my energetic bandwidth? Can it, and it may not. And so we may love them and be like, I love you, but, but I don't resonate with that. And, and so right now we're not in frequency together. And that's when they're, they're going to go on and they're going to do their own thing and you let them. And it doesn't mean, doesn't make one of you good, bad. It, it, mm-hmm. it just means you're not in the same frequency and absolutely you allow that with light and love and you don't judge. Yeah. And yeah. But we, but what we've done as a society is, but I love them. So I've got to get them to see, you know, I've got to change their mind. I've got to, or I've got to change them, be like them or no, you've got to be you and let them be them. And, and because you're at, um, and I hate to say they're going to come to your level or you're going to come to their level, but, but it is a level. It doesn't mean one's higher than the other, but it's still a different level. You will either come to one another's frequencies at some point or you won't. And and it's just the way it is. And um, you'll come to see, wow, I see now where that frequency is is the better one for me. That timeline, that timeline they're on is the right timeline for me. And they'll come to your timeline. Maybe that's the better way of putting it. Or you'll see their timeline is the better and you'll come to their timeline. Mm -hmm. Or your timelines don't ever meet. It's one of the two. Right. And if you're always, you know, if you're always doing your best to maintain 
your own frequency, then um, then you're always good. You're always good. You know, I mean, there may, there, you know, I mean, there, it's not like there won't be emotions and things like that that come up that maybe, you know, that you have to allow to pass through, um, or manage in some way. It's not like that. It's not like you're just sitting on a cloud somewhere and meditating and life is grand and that's all. (laughs) No, it it can hurt. It can be, it can be disappointing and those things, but. Sure. But, but, you know, you, you can manage them, um, even better when you are aware when you're using that awareness to stay in that frequency, when you can, when you, when you have that, and I don't want to call it a goal, but you have that as your, as your lifestyle, right? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to always try to, you know, maintain this frequency, and I'm going, to, which means I need to be aware of my thinking. I need to be aware of my manipulations. I need to be aware of, you know, my expectations of myself and others, you know, my behavior, all those things are part of it. Right. So. Right. When we, you said I was going to get to manifesting. So I am, I want to try to explain this and keep it really simple. Um, When we look at ourselves as one whole continuum of a light being, this is, this is us pure source energy coming you know, that is aware, conscious awareness. We're pure conscious awareness, okay? And we know what it is that we want to be, feel, and experience in physicality, okay? So this is the other end. And this is the stretch of energy that we have to slow our molecules down in and become the tactile, okay? So that's that's the continuum that is us. That is That is the being that we are. There is no that there were two separate beings. We are one whole complete light being. And this whole complete light being that is us is trying to translate the energy of what it knows, pure consciousness, into a physical life. And that's manifesting. And that's what we're all trying to do. We're always talking about, we're, we're trying to manifest this and trying to manifest that. This is what we're trying to do. Conscious awareness is trying to manifest through each one of us this beautiful as above, so below experience. And we simply have to allow it. That means we have to get out of our own way, get the aspects of us, these different densities out of the way and allow this pure stream of energy, which is in our heart space to communicate with us. And we have to allow. Allowing means that we don't just sit on a a cloud and it's all gonna just magically happen. That's why it's practical magic. We hold frequency. We stay in the frequency of unconditional love. So we know we, so we are loving ourselves. We're getting, we're getting the message from pure consciousness. This is what we're here to do. This is what we're here to do. This is, this is the translation. This is the frequency. This is it. And we hold that frequency. And then those things will come to us. Matching frequencies will come in. We're doing, we're, getting the education, we're meeting the right people, we're going to the places, but we're doing because we're being guided to by us. This is us, one whole continuum of energy that is us. And so it's flowing. We're not making anything happen. We're not fitting any roles that society's given us. We're not making anybody else do anything. And so somebody else who's not doing this, okay, they're not doing it. So, the, those who are doing it that resonate with us, they're going to come in and, and that's going to work. And those who aren't consciously aware and aren't doing it, we have no expectation of them to do it. Mm-hmm. And we may know in our beingness, we may know that's the job I was supposed to have. I'm, I'm, I'm awakened to that's the job I'm supposed to have. That's the person I'm supposed to be writing a book with. That's the soulmate I'm supposed to be with. That's the twin flame flame I'm supposed to be with. We may know those things, but we don't start falling into denser 3D energetic behavioral styles to make them happen because those people are sovereign of self. We just hold frequency. And then the other energies here that are in our frequency will come in. And those are the ones that we do our lives with because conscious energy, us, and their, their points of conscious energy that are translating through them, they're doing the same thing. It's like, okay, best and highest good. What's the best timeline? What's the best timeline? This is it. And so those timelines will converge 
together because we're holding frequency for them. And they're holding frequency for timelines. They're not aware of it because they're not living this way. They're not consciously aware that their energy, they're not consciously choosing to live this way, which is what the whole month of April is about. Conscious choice for the infinity of how you're going to live. Mm-hmm. But we are consciously choosing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill myself to do this. I'm not going to try to fill those roles. I'm not going to try to make stuff happen. I'm going to be me and I'm going to let a beautiful life flow to me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And so that's, that's the difference. Yes. Yeah. And that's a good way to describe it. And when you are talking about the infinity symbol, that is flow. That is flow. That is flow. flow. I mean, even even as a visual, it's just a flow. And that's that, you know, from that practical place, that's what happens when we are getting our own needs met. When we allow ourselves to to find things that are pleasurable and and engage in those things like it's not like you know oops can't do that sorry you know i don't have time or i don't oh no i could never do that well yeah you can you know if you're getting that calling that you want it then yeah you can and you should make it happen for yourself because the more you're there right the more you can stay in that in that frequency of your your own frequency which is going to be when you're getting your needs met it's going to be the frequency of unconditional love then the um the more that's going to flow and you know which means that when you're when you're sitting thinking about oh you know what a relationship would be really nice chances are one's that's one's come in. in right or you know what yep i need a bigger house chances are something is going to arrive yeah right you know all that kind of stuff your lights are up mine are up. i know i know it's because you know the other part is though so many people are going to hear you know this is what i want this is what i want this is what i want we've got to remember unconditional love for ourselves doesn't mean though it doesn't mean we put ourselves in the energy of just me just me just me because whatever energy we're putting ourselves in this energy we're putting out. So when we say what we want, we've got to remember, like, that's why we don't manipulate, okay? Because if we're manipulating to get what we want, then manipulation is what we get back in our lives and other people are going to manipulate us. So if all it is is my needs are met, my needs are met, my needs are met, then guess what? Everybody around us that we attract in, that's all they are. My needs are met, my needs are met, my needs are met. So what we're saying is you realize what it is that makes you happy, but it's all good and equal and giving. You are a person who is in positive energy loops. You understand that everything is about relationship and you understand that you are in relationship with people. It doesn't mean that you're a person who is um, an island unto yourself. You mm-hmm. understand that everything is relationship because that's too funny. often, too often that's where people stop. You know, that's that's how things were in the past. People were putting up boundaries and it was it's about me. It stops here. I'm going to do what I want. That that self-love. No, (laughs) no. What's going to happen then is you're going to surround yourself with a bunch of people that it's about me. It's going to be what I want. This is self-love. And you're going to be like, holy shit, everybody is nobody cares about me. And my life is I do everything myself. And and damn, life is hard. Yeah, because you made it that way, because that's the way you decided to treat everybody else, you know, and 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 in the meantime, you were also the reason you did that is because you were giving everything away to everybody. So you went you went from one extreme to the other and you're probably still living your life. There's still some people you probably didn't put up boundaries with and others you put up tons of boundaries with and and you're probably in this horrible yo-yo cycle and and trying to figure out why is this self-love stuff not working you know i'm why is this not working and well that's why because look what you're attracting in you've got one bunch that thinks i'm attracting in people who think i'm supposed to do everything for them i'm attracting in another bunch that thinks everything is about all all about me well it neither of those are right right it's, right. it's all about relationship with people who think and feel like you do Yes. That's yes. self-love. And that's what will get those relationships to you. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Totally yes. agree with that. Yeah. 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 And you know what? It's it's interesting that you would go there because um, because at some point, you know, from that practical place, we have to define for ourselves what does that mean? You know, and we just we defined it a little bit in book four, Transcendent Men Real Stories. Yeah. We define that. What is transcendence? Now, I mean, transcendence is, has got all kinds of different definitions, so we don't have to go into that one. But, you know, it's a it's a it's a 
when you're honoring yourself, it's things that you come to a realization about that you, um, about who you want to be. You know, you really are being who you want to be. And that, you know, that's keeping you in that place of unconditional love. So, right. you know, what, what, you know, I always encourage people, what, you know, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to you? And is that, is that going to bring you to a state where you both are honoring yourself and you're honoring those around you that you're in relationship with or you're not in relationship with? I really believe that it's that kind of behavior that will, you know, throw a huge screw in the works of, you know, um, racism, nonsense and, Absolutely. you know, gender, you know, gender that you know, like it are to our unacceptance. Lack right. of acceptance, better word. Lack, Lack of acceptance um, of of the differences in yes. the world. Absolutely. You know, it, it's not, it, you know, there are no different, you know, when we're in that level of, of unconditional love, there are no differences. You there know, are we are here to be in service to ourselves, first and foremost, and we're here to be in service to, to the world as a whole. Yeah. Not, in, not in that, oh my gosh, I really, you know, someone's calling me and I need to go and, you know, do such and such for them right now. You know, not in that way so much, but um, in the broader sense, you know, right. we're here to to love and support and to to be that beacon of unconditional love so that, yes, other people will be attracted to us, but relationship or not, they're going to learn from us and they're going, you know, we're going to exude that out. So we're it's expanding you know, consciousness and we're totally expanding it in in the in the frequency of unconditional love, not in the denser energies. Yeah. And that's that's what we're all doing. Yeah. And the transcendence, of course, is that all those aspects that are in between that are in the way, we're flicking them out of the way. We're saying, no, 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 we're not. We're not expressing you. We're not expressing you. We're expressing the highest yes. expression. Do you yes. have a card for us? I do. Should we go with the Palladians first? Oh, whichever. Yeah. Mm. I love the Palladians. Ooh, I like this one. Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Can you see it? Oh, sorry. I can't oh. really see it super well. Can Universal you? heart. Universal oh my gosh. Heart. Oh yes. my gosh. Hang on, let me get the little book. I'll give it a read. Yeah, it's beautiful, eh? That's sorry beautiful. That it's got it the, well, the sacred light. geometry. It's got the roses. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous. Okay. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a peek at this. Okay. Expand your heart, expand your love. There we go. And that, receive. That says it. <laughs> it does, it does, for sure. And receive the love of all universal creation. Your heart is a sacred broadcasting system that is able to send and receive love from all corners of time and space. By you sending love to us, the Palladians, for example, you bypass great distances in which we are able to receive the love instantaneously. The transcendence of space sheds light into the multidimensional omnipresent frequency that is love. You will observe how when one is in a loving open heart space, animals on your planet will come closer, be more receptive and generally become more open to your presence. This is because your animals represent the principles of naturalness and teach all that love is your natural state. As the hues reemerge back into their full galactic essence of the new cycle, love will become a natural state of your species and you will find yourself radiating it regardless of the situation you are experiencing at that moment. I love it. <laughs> It's a frequency that we are translating or transmitting. Um, that is, source is transmitting it through us. That's the frequency we're expressing. It is what we are. It is what we are transferring or, or transmitting or so back into. It's what we're becoming. Yeah. Um, we're going back up into. Um, I absolutely love it. The Palladians just, they just put it out there, don't they? So, well, okay, they what do. Else and could it be anything, you know? I mean, yeah. how, how do you say it all the time? You, you can't make this shit you up. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> you start reading it, and I'm like, seriously? Yeah, why did I even say anything? Why did I just let you draw a card and just say, yep, that stuff? <laughs> that's it. That's it. Okay, so this one is from the Oracle of the Seven Energies deck. Okay, all right. Yeah. Love that deck. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Okay. <laughs> all 
Oh, we've had this one before, actually, I think, recently. Okay. Beautiful uncaging. Oh my gosh, we have. We talked like, you and I had like a two hour discussion on that card. Mm. Yes, yeah. we did. I love very that card. Cool. Okay. It's very cool. Yeah. All beautiful right. Beautiful uncaging. I love it too. It's gorgeous colors. All right, let's find it. At this time, you're being called to assess where guilt is playing a part in your life, recognize how it's affecting you and others, and address it so you can release yourself from its grip. Guilt is a powerful emotional state capable of transforming difficult situations. It keeps you accountable for your actions when, you're done, when you've done something that causes harm. However, it can also feed a self-sabotaging cycle that fosters codependency and a distorted sense of personal power. Self-blame can lead to behaviors that perpetuate low self-worth. Have you done or said something for which you need to make amends? Have you disregarded a boundary or broken promise? Guilt can make you aware of potential ways you have given injury and show you how to re redress the, transge excuse me, the transgression. When you sincerely admit you are wrong and begin the process to fix it, this is an act of accountability, responsibility, and liberation. Yeah, it's so... Yeah, yeah, when you're there, <laughs> you, that, that's what's going to come to you, right? Well, it's to because when you. we, yeah, when we are in, when we let go of doing and making people be, um, when we realize that the first, first person we have to forgive for everything is ourselves, that we are mm -hmm. responsible for everything that happens to us because our goal is to hold frequency. And so if anybody is causing something in our lives and people do cause stuff in our lives it is ultimately because we are allowing them in our energetic bandwidth no a child of course they, they have no responsibility there they can't help who's in their energetic bandwidth that sort of thing but as an adult who we let in our energetic bandwidth we we are responsible so forgive yourself and forgive everyone else then for doing it because you let them in your energetic bandwidth to do it and then go on mm -hmm. you know and then whatever you've done to somebody forgive yourself for because you did it because of your level of consciousness and you did it because you you didn't know or it was non-resonant energy and you shouldn't have been there to begin with and and they let you into your energetic their energetic bandwidth to do it to begin with so so there's all this accountability stuff that we have for ourselves and we all just need to realize that we're energy and what we're doing to each other and we need to be in our resonant corners mm -hmm. and we need to step up our game and stop trying to tell ourselves that I'm doing the right thing when I don't do what's good for me, but when I do what society says is good mm -hmm. and that that's fast backwards and that the right thing is being in frequency and allowing what is resonant to be with us and what's not resonant to go and be with whatever it's resonant with. Mm -hmm. And that whenever it's going to decide, whenever, that energy changes and our timeline is resonant with it, it will come to us. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. But we're yeah. never going to be happy with something that we force ever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Especially within ourselves, you know? So if we are if we are trying to move into that place of the highest vibration, you know, that unconditional love, we need to figure out what that is for us, you know? So, and we have to do that forgiveness work. For sure, absolutely. You know, That's we have the stability. Yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. What what works for us and what doesn't work for us. We all know that stuff. Sometimes we don't always want to go there, but you know, That's start journaling, it. man. Like, just keep keep writing. You know, get it all out. Like, you know, that's yeah. it's all part of it. And and the the you, and you'll know when you are reaching new plateaus. You will feel it. Oh man, you will feel it. You know, yeah. you know that your life is, 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 you know, flowing that much better. You know that you feel so much better. You know, like there's just, there's a whole lot of benefits there for everybody, including the planet. And hello, your lights are up again. <laughs> yeah, I know. So for the 4-4 four, four, for today, for because we've got three minutes and you've got, you've got an appointment. I so do. for the 4-4 four, four portal and then for the um, new moon, full moon or new moon, whichever one it is, full moon that's coming up, and then the new moon later, and the solar eclipse, and then Mercury retrograde coming. For all these energies, the stabilization that you need to do is it's the same thing that we're always needing to do. The change that we're gonna face is the same thing you always need to do. Go into your heart space. Be true to yourself. Be who you really are. Don't let society tell you 
don't play a role. Don't think that you should tell other people or help other people be certain things. Don't think that it's all about you and that you've got to do it all by yourself either. It's none of those things. Everything is relative. Everything, everything you do and everything I do, we all affect each other. So be with energies that resonate and the changes that you need to make to stabilize your life are to come out of non-resonant energies and into resonant energies. And they are hard changes to make because we're comfortable with the non-resonant energies because that's where we've been and that's where society has told us we have to stay. That's your family. That's the person you married and you've got to stay married to them. That's the job that you're supposed to retire from. That's the, that's what you trained for. You went to college for 10 years for that, et cetera, et cetera. If you're not happy with it, you're not happy with it. If the heart is telling you that's the person you're happy with. That's when you're smiling. That's You know that's what lights you up. That's the job that lights you up. That's the hobby that lights you up. Those are the people that you're happy around. And those people make you feel like, then that's your frequency. Stop fighting it. Because all you're doing is you're, you're holding a space that is keeping other people from getting into their frequency. Mm -hmm. And the other people that you're supposed to be in frequency with they're having to hold frequency and wait for other energies to come in that are resonant with them because you're not there and you're the energy that's supposed to be there. And there's a void that they're waiting to be filled. So the most unselfish thing you can do is be who you came here to be, be in frequency. That's the most unselfish thing you can do. And the most selfish thing that's ever been done is when we told people it was selfish if you love yourself and you be who you yes. are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. You know, when you, when you are doing something that feels amazing and you know that it's the right thing, you just know it, just put your hand on your heart, you know, <laughs> put your hand on your heart space and allow yourself to feel it in your entire body. I've got just chills. Let, yeah. Let yourself go there. You know, like I often do this with my grandkids, like, Oh, could this feel any better than to see these pretty little faces and smiling back and laughing and giggling and, you know, all that silliness and, and it just feels amazing. And you, and you're, I mean, you're supporting yourself while you do that and you're loving yourself too. So yeah, Thank that, you. that is the thing to do. And so, yes, do your journaling, do your meditations, um, do your rituals, whatever it is for new moon, full moon, for all of those things. I'm sure I'll put out some meditations and stuff too. There's plenty of them out there though. And just, yeah, do what Diane is. Just, just feel mm -hmm. those good things and put your hands on your heart and just, just go there. Just mm -hmm. open up your heart space. Do the green light. I, I did a green light meditation recently. Green light is for the heart. That's why they had me do it as a matter of fact. It opens up the heart space. Do that when stabilize yourself with that energy. That, that's the one to do. That's the one to do. Just go into the heart. Yeah, and stabilize. Yeah, yeah stabilize. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. I don't think that it could be any more conscious or practical or magical than, than that. What do you think? <laughs> I think you're bang on. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, <laughs> ni that nice little intertwining of the two, and, yeah. and then everybody gets it. Right? Yeah. Love it. I love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank oh, you. thank you. Thank you. It's always great. Mm -hmm. Bye, you all. See you next time.